guys have stopped and radioed me saying they have a new smell. Oh, a lot of smell. Whoa, 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 whoa. Up. Down. Is your belly okay? I, I think I did. Fox shocks from my belly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting error messages on the RAM. No, nope. something's up. Something's up. You got it pressed. Okay. You gonna let some air in there? Yeah. I'm losing power. Oh boy. Everything's going wrong at the end. him out over there. So Andre, he thought he was a little low on coolant. I think maybe the temperature was up a little bit. I think he opened the cap inside. <laughs> <laughs> now his whole cab is filled full of steam. I was adding some coolant and um, I think it's a little hot dude. <laughs> I want to make sure it's got a little bit more coolant. Devil lives here, does it? David, I cannot believe this, but we finally reached the beginning of El Camino del Diablo with our Trailhound truck. It's been a long journey just to get here. According to Onyx Off-Road Maps, this is 125 miles of nothing but dirt. We're living civilization, so that highway right there is the last we will see people. For a while. Or at least, you know, there's no town. I'm kind of wondering like. though, what are these water trucks for? Is that like when people get stranded and they have to bring them water? No, I, I think that's for the quarry. Oh, anyway, okay. but but last night it rained. You could see all the rain here. And according to Onyx Off-Road Maps, this trail could be impassable. It was almost like the apocalypse last night because I was staying in the Al Alu cab. Yeah. And all of a sudden just... It was insane. At 40 mile an hour winds and rain, sideways rain. So uh, it's unpredictable, but this is what makes it fun. Yeah. This is a true overland adventure. We went shopping, we got supplies, we got water. Are you confident that this is gonna make it? No. <laughs> and we have, of course, the Ram Cummins versus the Soviet UAZ Buhanka Van Life van. It'll so, be a fun journey. So I guarantee that. did you bring a tow strap? No, but I brought you extra coolant, extra oil, extra transmission fluid. Okay. We might need it all. The big reason for me is because it's snowing at home right now and minus four. Okay, that's one reason. Well, another reason is um, actually our friend Scott Brady from Overland Journal. Uh, he ran this route last year in the Hummer EV. Really, a really remote area, 125 miles of nothing but dirt and off road trail. Number one, we're testing the suspension on the Ram, which so far I'm pretty impressed with, but for me, it's just testing the endurance of your loaf of bread. Yeah, it's very unpredictable. Um, will my van break down? You know, what's going to happen? We don't know. Uh, this road is called uh, the uh, Devil's Highway because it's been used for many, many centuries by many different people. And it's really, in the summer, it's really punishing with high temperatures. You know, almost no water and it's a, it's a very tough place to be. 
You mean it's hot as hell? This Ram 2500 overlanding series would not be possible without help from our friends at Rider Justice, a law firm that specializes in motorcyclists and the overlanding community across the country. Yep, they're passionate overlanders as well, and as with their motorcycle brothers and sisters, they want to make sure that overlanders like you protect their pricey rigs after an accident. Start with a simple audit of your insurance. And did you know that anything attached to your overlanding vehicle is covered by your auto insurance? But anything you put in your vehicle is covered by your homeowner's insurance. Don't know which is which? That's where Rider Justice can help. So go to riderjustice.com slash overlanding if you have an accident on your future overlanding adventure. If you've been watching this series, you know that this is a 2022 Ram Heavy Duty 2500 Cummins Turbo Diesel four-wheel drive. And it's been an entire humongous and wonderful collaboration between many, many companies to get us to this point. When we're starting the trail, the most important stuff, of course, are the suspension and the tires and the wheels. So we did a three and a half inch lift from BDS. We've got really high performance box shocks with adjusters uh, for low speed and high speed. And also we need to air down the tires. These are KMC wheels, really, really tough. And these are 37 inch tall BF Goodrich KO2s uh, that we should air down because we have full pressures from the highway and we need to make it more comfortable. I'm super excited about introducing you to Andre's van. A lot of you already know it, it's nicknamed Buhonka. Buhonka in Russian means a loaf of bread because it looks like a loaf of bread. It has your rudimentary springed, leaf spring suspension with shocks on all four. It has your standard cast iron transfer case, has a four speed manual transmission, it has a 2.7 liter fuel injected transmission or engine. It also has a monster, gigantuan luggage rack on top. Not only do you have room for your cooler, your bed, it has a dinette, it has sleeping space. This thing is super spacious. So I'm excited for us to spend a whole two days on the road. If you're wondering what's on top of the Bahanka, it's not the spare tire for the Bahanka. It has its own spare tire underneath here. It's the spare tire to the Ram and the trailer. Why is it up there? Because the Ram has no place for a spare tire. It's too big. I have a couple high-tech tricks up my sleeve. Uh, one of them is my Zanger Super Bass Pro lithium-ion battery. It's right now at 91%. I left home at about 95%. Um, so in order to get more juice into this battery, it's two kilowatt hours. So we can power our kitchen, our heaters, at least for the Buhanka itself here, so I can sleep in it. We need solar. We have three 200 watt solar panels. And since I have such a giant cargo rack on top, I figure, how about we just do one for now? Sure. And then when we stop for dinner or overnight, we can, um, well, that's not gonna help us. The sun is gonna go down. Well, let's take advantage of the sun we got. Okay, let's do that now. All right, David, so this is very high tech. We have to uh, daisy chain my uh, zip ties too. So Alex is behind the camera. Um, he's of course with us on this journey. And so is Frank. Frank, say hello. Uh, Frank is Alex's dog. Um, and Frank has been a big helper and he's also gonna help on the trail, right Frank? Um, okay. All right, David, so I have been in two-wheel drive for now, but we have a water crossing, this kind of big, giant puddle, and I don't know how fast or slow I should go. I'm just glad you're going first. Ah! Okay, not too bad. It was dramatic, but didn't really have any big bumps on the bottom of it for a rock. Thank goodness. This one's so good.
stop for lunch. We're already running into issues. Yeah, the threads are. I'm trying to remember who I I loaned my grill to last. Because it's uh, not wanting to thread in there, right? Give me some power. The sun worked, Alex. We got 100% power, and now I have to push AC. Okay, and the system should now output. Whoa, David, it's drawing like 900 watts. We can run for like two we, hours. We can cook for two hours only. So please cook fast, okay? okay. All right, David, you have cooked up a storm. Yeah, luckily we had both options of gas and electric because my electric grill didn't, or my gas grill didn't work. Okay. So, Zinder. Comes Zinger? to the rescue? Yeah, Zinger. Zinger. Yes. Zinger well, you, you could say, you say tomato, I say tomato. This is our, by the way, this is our fast lunch. Mm. It's good, but fast. And then and for tonight, dinner, yeah. for dinner we'll do something major. Well, we're gonna live it up. We're gonna hang the Christmas lights and Just put wait. out the awning. But David, do you know what I'm scared about? What's that? Is that we only drove like 10 miles of this trail and we have 125 <laughs> miles. <laughs> I noticed we were averaging about 20 miles an hour. If we can continue that pace, I think we'll, we'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Is that all the ketchup you want? Okay. Uh, okay, another dollop of ketchup. <laughs> and actually, this only took like 10 minutes, it right? It wasn't bad So we're all. not using a lot of energy, no, actually. No, we could, we could do this for two hours, you said? Yeah. That's a lot of hamburgers. Ah, uh, this is great, thank right. you. Alex. Now, now, Alex and Frank, where's Frank? Frank, you want a cheeseburger? Yeah, Waiting <laughs> patiently for some droppings. <laughs> <laughs> so we cooked lunch, four burgers, was really, really great, used 12% of this battery. I think that's really acceptable. So I'm going to plug in the solar wire once again, and we can get on the road. Here we go. You know, I am kind of excited about this, simply because everybody waves at Andre when he's in this. Nobody waves at me in the ramp for some reason. We're in the middle of the desert, the heater's off, and this thing is dumping out hot air on us. It is. I was asking Andre where the air conditioner is, and he said it doesn't have one. Here's air conditioning right here, except you have to drive one-handed. It kind of funnels the air right at you. The guys have stopped and radioed me saying they have a new smell. What does that mean? Hey Alex, um, we have a new <laughs> smell developing. Oh, oh and I it's, smell that. it smells electrical. Yeah, it's not motor smell. It's not like uh, antifreeze. And a little smoke is coming out of the dash. Can you pick that up, Alex? You see it right in the front? Uh-huh. And the mol voltmeter all of a sudden dropped. It was at 14 volts and now it's at 12. But the engine is happy, happy as a clam. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no noise coming out of the motor. Do you think it's because the heat is coming from the heater core and it's like melting something? No, that's an electrical smell. I just feel if anything's hot up here. Don't burn yourself. Oh, a lot of smoke! Whoa, 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 whoa! Right there. What happened? It's this. Oh, were your it's lights on? Headlights. Were your lights on? Yes. Because we're videoing. It's a, it's a video process. My lights were on. Huh. Well, the switch. Maybe the switch just malfunctioned. It's too much power for the Russian wiring. <sighs> Let's leave the lights off. And for, drive at it. least for now? Yeah. So that means we cannot drive at night. 
Oh. But but also what about your light bar. Um, there's kind of a problem. <laughs> so we need to wire that. To, we could wire it together, yeah, maybe. That, that'd be easy. Um, but actually, the um, we are on mostly there's partially public land, BLM. There's military owned land that we're going through, and they're saying uh, do not drive it. They recommend not to drive at night. Well, of course, yeah. We might put off a heat signal that. One of those heat-seeking <laughs> missiles might find us, especially with, you know, like fire burning up. Yeah. How's how's the ram doing? That's fine. No fires. No fires. <laughs> oh, we found the border. I want to go climb the fence. <laughs> going into Mexico? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey David, uh, there is some a new development. We're in this kind of a wash section of El Camino del Diablo, and it's really narrow. Yeah, it is, and also I noticed that uh, since this thing's been lifted, it's so tall that these bushes that are leaning in are catching sides of the truck. Do you think you're getting pinstriped? I don't see how I can't be getting pinstriped. Well, here's my thing, okay? I spent about almost $20,000 on this uh, Buhanka. Yeah, this is when you wish your rig was just an old beater like yours. Yeah, and even though my, my beater is kind of rare, right, I still feel relatively okay. Ooh, pinstriping it. Ah, ah, pinstriping a little. He's slowing down. Doesn't like it. I don't like it either. That ram, we all together, including the truck, that's about a hundred thousand dollars. The truck was about sixty-eight thousand. Alu cab is about eighteen. Suspension, BDS suspension, and Fox shocks were about five grand altogether. Wheels and tires are another several thousand dollars, uh, and on and on and on. I just can't avoid them. I guess going slow kind of helps. Well now I have to engage four wheel drive because now I see water. I do have to get out and lock my manual hubs. Buhanka is, is a little bit tall. I'm in neutral. Oh no. I've been driving this for a lot, quite a bit and why do I always forget? It is spinning. Four wheel? Four wheel. Let me go check on David. So Andre just tried to get into four wheel drive. It took him a couple minutes. I saw that. What do you have to do? Uh, use my finger. One finger. Nice and easy. Yeah. No rolling back and forth. No. no dancing with levers. No, just one finger. Sheesh, God. This is pretty nasty. Now I understand what they're talking about. Ugh. Okay, I'm I'm through. I'm through. I'm I'm okay. or 50 miles into the trail and the further we go along the less and less this uh, looks like a road. It's getting really rocky here. Yeah let's see if we can get one at the base of one of these volcanic little mounds. Wow. It's really rocky now. The variety of the terrain is amazing. There's volcanic sections, sharp rocks, sandy, fast gravel, slow mud. You can see it. 
see a little bit of everything here. Hey guys, what do you think? Is this, is this a cool uh, camping spot? I feel like we're in the middle of nowhere, which actually well, which we is are. true. <laughs> I don't think. When's the last person we saw? Like how many hours ago? Like three and a half hours ago. Yeah, we haven't seen a car since. Or a person of any kind. Or a person. So yeah. I think this is great. Uh, look, the sun has crested. The sun fell below behind the mountains on the west side. Yeah. It's going to get very cold very fast. But. We well, have let's set up camp. We need. Yeah, let's set up camp. We, we have, have heaters. We have, you know, power. We have food. We have food. Let's get going. Yeah, what, what is? Reach up there. I can do it. No way I could do that. Really? Uh uh. That right there. I thought this was natural for everybody. Oh. Nice. Let's do this awning. It's pretty awesome. It's um, 270 degrees. See, there's a couple of velcros. You want to take it? Yeah. Look how we parked, precisely. I can't reach it, Andre. What? I can't reach it. No, no, you're supposed to step on the step of the truck oh. and do all this stuff. Well, the giant can do it. Andre the giant? Yep. Are you going to run your heater tonight? Maybe. That's pretty cool that they space it just enough. See? So that the heater still can Smart. Bend. This is supposed to go up. Can you get it there? Yeah, nice! Sweet! Sweetness. Now we can set up our everything here. Alright, let's get to cooking. Alex, Frank wants to go into the house. Yeah, he knows this is his uh, home for the night. So we're gonna get it all set up, I promise. Super easy to get this thing set up. Just pull these bins. Oh, Dave and I are both too short for camping. Uh, apparently. There we go. We're all set up. Took like two seconds. And then yeah, up here I've got a little mattress, storage cubbies, got a light up there, and uh, my own set of windows so I can wake up and take out the sunrise. We're making uh, stir fry Alfredo or whatever. <laughs> With oh, chicken, wait. right? Look, we're making Alfredo chicken. Uh huh. Yeah. Carrots, broccoli, peas. So, but the, but the Alfredo, we have to put in warm water in these packets. Okay. So I'm making warm water. With Mr. Coffee? With Mr. Coffee, yeah. So two two appliances are running at the same time. Yeah, that's bound to be pulling, what, 500 watts? Or okay, sorry? look, look. Okay. Yeah, we were at 900 watts, now it's worth 1,700 watts. So we're pulling a lot of power, dude. Alex, so David already seen this, but I want to show you something. Okay. So I bought this recently on Amazon, and this is supposed to be amazing. So, can you tell? Oh yeah, I can tell. Nice. Um, when I bought it, I thought it was gonna be larger. That's really tiny. Who's well, emptying that in the morning? <laughs> Let me try, hold on. Let me show you something. What? I stole something from the hotel last night. What? Aha! Oh. Toilet paper! <laughs> yes! Smells good, baby. Uh huh, that's looking good. Ooh. Hey, test one of them noodles for me, Andre. See if they're. One noodle? Yeah. Mmm, it's getting soft. Is it good? Yeah, it's not. Is it ready or no? Um, could use a couple more minutes, maybe. Okay. Well, what about the Alfredo sauce? It's in the coffee pot. Oh. Warming up. Ooh, it feels hot. This is nice. Thank you. Pipe and that, 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 That's enough for now. You sure? Well, let's, what, what, what's for a second course? Or a third course, I mean. Uh, more of the same. See, there's Alfredo. My little baby Alf Alfredo? Uh-huh. Okay. And no complaining, Andre. If Whoa. it doesn't taste good, I'm not to blame. No, because we're 80 miles away from people in most directions mm -hmm. so I can't complain this is amazing thanks Andre yeah. 
coffee's ready. Am I gonna have to make breakfast in bed for you too? No. You get coffee in bed. No, no. Hold up. What time is it? It's time to do calisthenics. We're on a military base. <laughs> well, thank you, David. Yeah. I'm gonna get up now. Well, we got calisthenics. We're gonna do burpees and farties. <laughs> I got the eggs in there. And, uh, oh yeah, we're having Spam, because that's what Alex likes. It's his favorite. No, he did. that's not true. <laughs> Is it Alex? No, please don't light me up in the comments. Oh. <laughs> no, no, the, I did this. I, I bought this. Are you playing a joke on us, or what? Or do you like Spam? Sure, why not? Yeah, okay. Well, it's less sodium, so it's healthier than ever. Oh, hash browns. And hash browns. Okay. Frank, you like hash browns, right? Yes, hash browns are good. That's for, that's for Alex. Why are you bringing Alex into this? <laughs> are the eggs ready? The eggs are ready. Oh, it smells so good. Okay. Here, here's your piece of spam. Here. Okay, thanks. The hash browns are not so. They're not. They're not brown yet. They're just mashed. Okay. okay, we have to go in. We have to go in order. I'll go one, two, three, four, one, and then we're gonna one, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. Go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I see you. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now let's do push-ups. Ah, uh, in the desert. All right, ready? Yeah. Down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> 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 Okay. Yeah, David, look, it's official. Oh, that looks good. I like that placement. It's now a buhanka. Oh, I need to borrow your shovel. This what, is why? Uh, I'm not saying, but that's really a cool shovel. Well, I think it can extend. Oh, sweet. How about that? I like it. Um, okay. But wait, 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 wait. You see this? Why, why? Maybe your buns can fit on that one, but mine can't. <laughs> see that swore right there? I'm gonna lean against the swaro. Please, they're protected, David. Don't touch and, the swaros. And then I'll use a choya to wipe. No, no. <laughs> He's hardcore. Did you know that David actually grew up near Tucson, Arizona? Right, David? I did, yeah. Tucson, he's a desert man after all. Frank, come here, bud. Okay, come on, buddy. Privacy. Let the man have his moment. That's how it's supposed to be. Bubbles are all good. All right, so we checked the coolant and the oil. Uh, we're pretty good. Yep, all good. So now it's uh, time to continue. The passenger tank is almost done. Empty. Okay, let me switch it. Okay. So there's a little switch here, which is rattled out. You see that? Yeah. Ooh, he just went Look. <laughs> Magic. Yeah. That was it. You were just out of gas. One tank got us right to here. Which one's the bigger tank? My driver's side is okay. way bigger. We got enough to get out of here? I hope so. Any doubts about the uh, ram? No, it's gotta do its little preheat though. Preheat. Please wait for automatic engine start. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can see our tire pressure. We dropped them down. 47, 50, 51, 52. We could have gone lower, but she's riding pretty good on that. So David is driving the ram in front of me, and he decided to go fast. 
I mean, it's not fast for him. It's fast for me. We're going 60 uh, kph, which is, I don't know, 35, 40 miles an hour on, on dirt. the first Jeep we've seen, the first other off-roader in a long time. Saw some Border Patrol when we first started the trail, but that's the only other person we've seen that looks to be just doing the trail. All right, so you guys uh, spent the night in the Ram. How was it? Comfortable. It was great. Yeah. We didn't have to, we have a heater back here, propane heater. We didn't turn it on once. Okay, so insulation is good? Insulation was good and these, uh, the rooftop tent, I didn't, I thought David was like getting up at 4 a.m. and then I unzipped the window and it was bright, but pitch black in there with all the shades shut. So, real That's nice. That's amazing. Yeah. We've been running cameras for the past two days without power. Um, so this is coming in handy because we have a nice red arc system here with the little control panels. So we can uh, do things like, Let's unlock it first. Um, so you can turn power on to the upstairs because there's 12 volt and uh, some USB chargers up there. You can also turn the 12 volt on down here. Same thing with the lights. You can quickly turn them on or off. Um, but our GoPros are dying. So we've got a little USB-C port here, or USB-A. There's also USB-C up top. And now I can get my camera gear charge back up and just leave it back here while we hit the, the rest of the trail. And we also have solar on the, on the roof of this. So the battery is 100%. Yeah, and we've been using it. We had the lights going all night last night and uh, yeah, it just holds power. And we've got lights here in the top, which really came in handy for cooking. They're adjustable brightness and you can also hold it. And boom, you've got red light so you can keep the critters out. the western part of uh, the Diablo Highway and this is so rough this is just washboard from hill yeah how long have we been on this um an hour and how fast are you going 12 kilometers per hour which is what <laughs> seven miles an hour <laughs> and, or eight and there's no way we could go any faster I mean we could but I think there would be nothing left of the Buhanka <laughs> or us for that matter. Is your belly okay? I, I think I need box shocks for my belly. <laughs> yeah, we had to take some extra pillows and put under the seats. Oh yeah, it's bu real <laughs> Buhanka stuff. <laughs> the abuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting error messages on the RAM. What is it? Service stability control and service brake trailer brake controller. Uh, okay, yeah, let's get this on camera. I'm rolling right now. So those warnings popped up little before I could get the camera rolling um, and you can see the stability control light right there it also said service trailer brake controller uh, and that warning just popped up on the center screen there where the tire pressures are right now so so yeah uh, hopefully if we just like I'm rolling camera right now talking about it and uh, 
I figure let's finish off the trail and then we'll try power cycling it when we're closer to civilization. So yeah, uh, stability control light came on, not too worried about that one. We got a trailer brake controller warning. That one isn't gonna affect us out here, but we need to, to get back to- David needs to water a plant. David needs to take a leak. We definitely need the trailer brake controller to get back to Colorado, so hopefully a little power cycle will, uh, will help us. I think we could power cycle the truck right here on the trail, but Roman has had some bad issues power cycling the Hummer EV. Um, and we're really far out from anyone that can help us. We don't have cell service. So I'm going to leave the truck running because it's driving and working just fine right now. And uh, when we get off the trail, we'll reassess and see what's going on. It smoothed out. Hold on, I'm losing power. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Probably vapor locking after all that. I'm losing power. Hold on. Okay. Let me try it again. Accelerate. No. No. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Go like this. Don't lift it up too much. Okay. Just let it press. Okay. Let some air in there? Or? Yeah. Okay. I'm losing power. Oh boy. Everything's going wrong at the end. You think maybe we overheated? I don't smell anything. Or maybe we got some bad fuel or uh, something came out in the fuel pump? I'm, I'm thinking maybe we vapor locked with all the... Up, up and, and down, down, you know? Oh, there. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Can you hear it? Yeah. So when I'm applying um, accelerator in third gear, it starts to hiccup and it's losing power. In the second gear, it's happy. And right now it's happy. Right? Yeah. So I guess we can move forward and... Or what we're just... Uh, I guess... I would move forward. We're still in the middle of nowhere. Now we are. We haven't seen anybody for hours. Well, since yesterday, really. Yeah. I saw that one Jeep and that was it. One Jeep. There was one Jeep. Yes, the good news is I did not power cycle the Ram and that stability control warning went away. So, Ram seems to be good. I think the fuel gauge on the Bohanka is not precise. And what, it's, uh, what it looks like, David, is that we're low on fuel. David, let's do the other tank. Wow. Move the whole van trying to pick yeah. it up. Yeah, maybe we have a vapor problem. I, I wouldn't doubt it with as much shaking as going on that the other side could have got just pressurized so that it can't suck enough fuel to provide enough power enough power um, so it's possible what do you think yeah whatever you do go hard and fast <laughs> you're gonna have it all over your leg okay I'm gonna hold this are you holding it yeah ready <laughs> <laughs> It's getting better, right? Yeah, not dripping as much. Well, let's switch tanks and see. So we did have some spillage here, uh, but this field we're in is full of unexploded ordnance, David. Well, so let's just light this on fire then. Well, it's sand. Oh, okay, maybe we'll do that. All right, David, so we tried to relieve the fuel tank pressure. Yep. And we uh, filled up passenger side. So, the switch tanks? Well, not yet. Hold on, let me let me try to fire up here. Okay. Ooh. That sounds good. It, it sounds happy. Yeah. Should I try see. rolling? Yeah. Let's see what it does in that tank. Huh? Back to normal. <laughs> it's back to normal. Yeah. I think it was really bad pressure there. Yeah, I think we just shook things up. 
I'm all shook up. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm glad we have more fuel in the passenger side now. Yeah, we ought to be able to finish the trail. Let's hope we make it. supposed to take this turn off right here and man this app is coming in clutch I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring TFL off-road this uh, really doesn't look like the way you should go so if you're just following the trail that looks like the more traveled route but that's not the right way to go so yeah we've used Onyx a ton off-roading in Colorado and Moab but both those places we're pretty familiar with we pretty much know our way around here we would be way, way lost without these offline maps that we downloaded. This is at least the third time that we've gone the wrong way and had to correct ourselves with Onyx Off-Road. needs four low because I need enough gearing to go slower yeah. and climb climb some of these hills. You don't necessarily need the traction, you just need the gearing. Yeah, the gearing yeah. itself. I don't think your Civic will do this, uh, David. No, I, you know, this is one of the toughest trails as far as just endurance yeah. that I've ever been on. Even Alaska doesn't compare? No, Alaska. Yeah, everybody says I, I need a, two spare tires and extra gas, but this is a whole different test to your vehicle right here. Getting pretty rocky through here. And pretty narrow too. Try my best not to pinstripe this truck, but there's only so much you can do. This thing's big and heavy. And yeah, it's just a wide truck. But I'm really having to lean out the window and look where my higher is so I can see exactly how far I am to the trail. That way I can get the right side as far away from the trees as possible. But at a certain point, there's just not a whole lot you can do. And it's even harder because the Buhanka left me in the dust because they're so much smaller. And this hood is massive. I know David has talked about that already, but it's really hard to see over this hood. So you gotta remember like 10, 15 seconds in front of you what all the rocks look like. Otherwise, yeah, you're just guessing the whole time. Yo! Are you okay? Yeah! I'm pinstriping the hell out of this truck though. I'm not too bad. Definitely some scrape pitched by the Trailhound logo. That's buffs. That'll buff yeah, out. That'll all buff out. That will buff out. That'll too. buff out. Oh, it will buff out. It'll all buff out. The boss will be happy. <laughs> and this little guy has just been an absolute rock star today. He's gone off roading a handful of times in Colorado, but nothing this long, nothing this extreme. And he's just having a ball. He's tired. Hey, Dave. 
of it, I see civilization. It's just over there. Just over the hill, it's been two days. And uh, you know, Buhanka is struggling. I think we have a, 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 the vapor lock issue came back. I'm barely moving under like idle power. I don't know, this is it. Buhanka gave it 100%, 100% power. <laughs> gave it all she had and now I think we'll give it a rest in Fortuna here. <laughs> Maybe we'll give our bodies a rest in Fortuna. Yes. Your, your legs and your arms have to be so tired. I, uh, well, I, I can feel every rock with the steering wheel. And I'm surprised you haven't busted a thumb today. I, I'm, I'm keeping them up for good driving. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up. This really is a test for the endurance of both car and driver. Yes, and human, human machine. Yeah. Uh, this has really been a devil's highway. So I'm really glad we did it. All right, well, we just finished the trail. Andre's pulling up. There is pavement, which we haven't seen in a long time. I haven't shut this truck off since I got those errors, so let's make sure we're good to go home. Open the door so it power cycles. It looks like we're good. Truck fixed itself. We did it, David. Hey, this deserves like a big hug, okay. man. Okay. Can you hold me up? It's been two days, can, yeah. Can you hold me up? Because I can't I... believe he's been like this like, <laughs> for two days. He's tough. So he's Al tough. Alex behind the camera, we got Frank uh, over here in the truck. Uh, really thank you for your support. Uh, that was a trip. That was, that was a lot. That was a big trip. It was a lot of, lot of fun. I mean, we saw some really cool country, but it tested the endurance of both vehicles as well as the humans that were driving them. Yeah, a lot of human testing as well. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and my bladder, it tested my bladder. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this journey of Trail Hound. The Trail Hound is purely, it's born. By the way, did it recover from the errors? It did, it fixed itself. It fixed itself! What about your vapor lock, did it recover? No, no. I still have vapor lock. So now we need to get the trailer and get the Bohanka home another a thousand miles and celebrate yes